us here. By seeing how many people here, I realize how intense the interest is in the issues in this community. So I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. I, I, you, and also, one other thing, finally, saveourclaremont.org is the, is the organizational website. So I'm, in, I'm minimizing what I say. You can go there to find out more. Do, all, do most of you know about the, the idea of Claremont Hotels Project? Okay. Well, basically, a few years ago, this thing got started. And the idea is to do two basic, two major things. One is to build a tower, a four, a four or five story tower of condominiums right by the tunnel road entrance to the hotel, right where the parking lot is now. If you ever walk up that path that goes from the hotel up to Alvarado Road, it would be the, one of the walls would be right along there. So that would add 43 or 42, they changed the plans a little bit, units there. The other major thing they would do would be to increase the club membership by 250 memberships, which means in most cases, many cases, at least it would be families with perhaps even multiple vehicles. And there's some other details like uh, tennis courts and swimming pools and basketball courts and there have been two iterations of the plan and in the second one some of those things were eliminated. But the important thing is this, the second iteration of that plan didn't come until like November of 2016. So that's 15 months ago. So we haven't seen anything in writing about that. So we don't really know what's going on about that. The meetings that took place around the time the first plan was issued, there was a meeting at the Planning Commission. Was, this is in Oakland, by the way, the Planning Commission in Oakland, because part of the hotel property is in Berkeley, and many of the affected neighbors are in Berkeley. Um, and a lot of people objected and spoke about many issues there. The Landmarks Preservation Board held a, held a hearing in May, May last year, it was continued to June. At that meeting, the basic historical evaluation they presented was really, in our opinion, an attempt to um, change the, the amount of area that was landmarked to allow the area where they wanted to build the condominium to be liberated from that appellation so they could, they could do things to it that wouldn't be protected in quite the same way. And um, <coughs> that was very objectionable. We thought the way uh, the Oakland City Planner dealt with the meeting and the Landmark <coughs> Preservation Board members were being frustrated with the fact that they couldn't uh, really, weren't allowed really to affirm the boundaries the way they wanted to. So that, 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 I want to say that's where things were, that's what the proposal is, and that's where things stand now. And the reason I'm going to be really very brief about it is because nothing's really happened. We're all waiting. But when it does happen, it might happen quickly, and it will have some impacts. What would the impact be? One thing, having 43 units and 250 more club members are going to have a huge impact on the traffic in the area, and on the parking in the area. And at a certain point, that's going to impact how people get down Ashby, how people get down Claremont, and so it'll be an impact on our entire community here in terms of the traffic. Um, and the cars and the, uh, and the amount of, of the stoppage on tunnel and Ashby, especially during emergencies, would be very, you know, might be very uh, fatal. Uh, we don't know from the 1991 fire that, you know, that that was the major ex escape route. If you imagine all those other people pouring, trying to pour into the street from down there, blocking the, ac the access to uh, get back and forth, emergency vehicles getting in, people getting out. So it, it doesn't seem like the right kind of place to put uh, a, bi a big development right in that little narrow one lane each way where all, the, all 24 and 13, Ashby, Claremont, and the Derby, all those things are in that one little narrow stretch there. And to pinch that more, it seems like a bad idea. The, in addition, you, we all saw the earthquake, I'm sure all of us felt the earthquake the other day, and you know, that was right under the hotel. So the idea of building a big housing complex there, you know, far away from mass transit, it just, you know, it's, it's really endangering people more than they need to be endangered. So in some respects, our, our, our livability of the, of the neighborhoods is, and, and the people who live there would be at stake. Finally, I think all of us, certainly in our area, I live above the hotel, that was there for the fire, then around for the whole thing. We were very um, proud that the hotel got saved at the fire. I think it meant a lot to our community. I'm sure you felt the same way. And so all of us really feel very deeply that the hotel is something we want to save and preserve. So we're trying to think of ways you know, they can, that they can keep it solvent and, uh, and, and without wrecking things. You have to remember that the, the history of the hotel, and there's a time chart over there, I mean, it's been a lot of sh financial shenanigans. So a lot of the people that own that hotel are deeply in debt or trying to you know, make, make money out of it. So the, this proposal isn't so much that something that's going to keep, sustain the hotel over the years ahead. It's something that's going to help the people who've invested in it to make their money back. So that, that, that to us is a very big difference in how we, how we feel about it. So um, I 
think that's probably most of the things I really want to say, because if there was, at some point there may be a pressing issue, and I just want the Rockbridge community, like our community above, above the Claremont, to know the basics of our point of view. Now, if you go to the um, Signature Development website, you know, that's, those are the people that are involved. I looked at it today, and there was nothing about this on there, but, you know, we, we, we would do, do everything you can to inform yourself with the, insofar there's two sides to this issue. We all obviously know we need housing, so anything that, you know, adds to the housing stock has to be at least looked at seriously. And um, we have here, um, there's three clipboards I've got, we can pass them around. One of them is just to be on our email list to get a prize of things, and there hasn't been much going out on that from the last year because not much has happened. Another one is just to affirm the boundaries of the, of the landmark for the hotel. And the last one is to express your objections to the club membership being raised so high. Yeah. If you, if, I don't know if any of you are club members or if that is impact to you, and maybe you don't want to bother with that one, but certainly about the Landmark Hotel, we really don't need a big 43-unit condominium sitting there in front of that. So when you look across the bay, instead of seeing the hotel, you see you know, a, a kind of gray tower structure. Okay? Is that Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? One or two questions, please. Thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. I just want to understand, 43 condos are proposed, and where on the property in relation it's, to the It's hotel? one building with 43 units in it and with parking underneath it. The overall amount of parking would not be greatly increased by this plan at all. It would be a few spaces. If, you, if you're going on tunnel and you go into the entrance there by the hotel, to your right, the area there to your right, so it's a lower parking lot sort of stuff. I could talk about the landmark status of why, even though that's an ugly parking lot, why keeping it the way it is is important in terms of the overall structure of the hotel and what its historical purpose has been over the years. But that's what they're planning to build it. Can you explain where the Oakland Berkeley city limits fall and who has jurisdiction over that plan? O Oakland uh, wormed its way out of Berkeley many years ago. I mean, the hotel did. So it could, do, could be manipulate Oakland probably better and. And there was a time when Berkeley had like this, you know, mile from campus alcohol thing as well. If you remember, if the old timers here may remember that like I do. So there, there were some advantages to them being in Oakland. And there's a very tiny stretch of the, of the tennis court area which is still in Berkeley. So this will all be decided by. Uh, okay, Berkeley, is weighed, Berkeley is weighing in. The, the, the mayor is not particularly pleased with the project. And, but the impact, it, actually, it's kind of bad because the impact is on a lot of Berkeley residents. I mean, our, our neighborhood, like yours, has, you know, one, one house is in Berkeley, one house is in Oakland, you know, but back and forth where we are. And so the poor people in Berkeley are, are relatively disenfranchised about this. But luckily, when you go to an Oakland hearing, you raise your hand, you get up there, you fill out the form, and you're talking. So nobody's really paying that much attention, just like I might have an Oakland and Berkeley library. <laughs> I live in Oakland. Any, any other questions? Yeah. Last one. Um, the, that slice of land that you talked about, yeah. is that where they just tore down the the um, I don't think so. I think that converted garage was something that was just being needed to be torn down because it was just in bad shape, I think. I think so too, but is that part no. of Berkeley, that little triangular piece of land there? Or is it I, I don't really know that. I, I, I'd have a hard time picking it up. I think probably some of the maps on the website might have more details of where it is. But it's a little, just a little bit, I think I think it's just tennis court area. It was something that they could get away with doing the tennis court by moving it. You know, have, some of it had to be stay in Berkeley, but... That, that's historical stuff that I really don't know, but it is, a t it is true that a small part of the, of the hotel grounds are in Berkeley. Yeah, the, the uh, street, I think, was at yeah. the time the side lines. Yeah, the that creek, by the way, the, the hydraulic issues there are another matter. I didn't bring them up right now. <laughs> yeah, one more. Well, that's it. You, you got okay. it. Uh, have, has the city, or has either city, Berkeley or Oakland, done an environmental uh, you know, resource well, that's what we're waiting for. It. We're waiting nothing. for a draft environmental impact report. We've been waiting since November of 2016, and nothing's happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, in our wildest dreams, we uh -huh. imagine that either the economy or their recognition of the, of the problems they have would make would they could think twice about proceeding with this. Right. We have no idea if that's the case or not. And so you don't know if the, the, the latest search wave we had would affect that. <laughs> I mean, I think underneath the hotel itself. Of course, it would affect the side point of view. <laughs> but I think that, you know, if you're willing to put enough money into anything, you can make anything, you know, as earthquake proof as you can get it. It's 9 3, we're all, we're all jello, but, yeah. you know, but that, that's the way things stand. Okay, um, we have to move on. Oh, okay. But we, you want to? Yeah, if, if anyone wants to talk to David, he'll be available outside. Okay.
Uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, a discussion about the uh, for BART, the around the BART station. Some of you may have noticed some of the trees have been disappearing over the last week or so. And uh, we have uh, Richard Fuentes from the BART Public Affairs Department, and he's going to be talking about um, what's happened and where things go from here. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Richard Fuentes. I'm with BART. I do government community relations for the district, and I tell the Allegheny <coughs> County I've been here a couple of times when we've done presentations to the community in regards to the status of BART, kind of what the future is, and uh, projects that we're working on. This evening, we're here because we want to share with you on a project that we're working at the Rockford Station, which is a tree replanting project along Keith Avenue and the street right below, uh, uh, below it on Shaffer. Uh, Mary Grace is a BART uh, staff member who's leading the project. She's going to do an overview of the presentation. We also have Director Saltzman, who's your elected uh, BART representative, she's right in the back. Director Rebecca Saltzman, she's here in case you have any questions that you would like to ask her. Uh, and we'll get started with the presentation. Now, one key thing that we want to do is to get your input. So I'll be passing out a couple of comment cards and some bar pens, and then we'll collect it afterwards so that we could have some written material and we could take that back with us. So, yes, sorry. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary Grace Kulayan, and I'm Division Manager of Civil Engineering and Maintenance and Engineering with BART. And uh, I'm here to tell you kind of why the trees have come down <laughs> and how, what input we'd like to get from the community to replant those two planting strips, Long, Shafter, and Key. So we appreciate your participating and helping us. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit of why we move the trees, findings of the trees being hazardous, um, our tree selection considerations, our present alternatives, and then we'd like to get some input from you all and go through next steps. So why we move the trees? Well, our BART station is celebrating its 45th year in service, which is exciting, but that means our landscaping around there is also 45 years old. Um, and the trees are matured, and honestly, they've reached the end of their useful life. Um, BART maintains an ongoing effort to assess the trees throughout our district in looking to ensure that they're safe and, and uh, Having to down trees is part of what we have to do sometimes because they just have gotten to the point where they no longer can't for safe for the public. So we hired a um, certified arborist this last year who went through quite a bit of the district and identified here at Rockridge several trees that really needed to come down. Um, the tree assessment recommended the removal of one dead coast redwood and 16 eucalyptus that had reached the end of their useful life. So what does it mean when we identify a tree as hazardous? Um, it's got a history of failures where limbs are falling into parked cars and what have you. The limbs are overhanging the walkways and the parking areas and those areas are in constant use. Um, codominant <coughs> trunks that are weakly attached, poor architecture with the big limbs, and the roots were starting to cause a significant amount of trip hazards. These are all symptoms of just the age of these trees. So, BART's committed to replacing these trees. We know it's important to the community to have a nice streetscape, and that's a lot of why we're here tonight. Um, what's BART done over the years? Well, those trees that came out were eucalyptus trees. We wouldn't typically replant eucalyptus in this day and age. Um, over the past several years, the BART team has gone through and looked at what are better options for trees on BART property, and some of those things that we consider are what is the climate that they're going in? Are they drought resistant? Are they safe to have in the areas we're planting them? Are they appropriate for the size of the areas? And how are they going to, are we going to be able to maintain them and, and keep them healthy with the resources we have? Um, so we have an updated BART approved 
plant list that includes trees that are appropriate for parking lots, street frontages, and around our tracks. Uh, the City of Oakland also has an approved street tree plant list. Uh, we looked at the urban environment. We looked at issues of site distance. We have a lot of traffic that has increased over the years, especially over the 45 years since the train station has been there. A lot more traffic along Keith and Shafter. And hopefully have uh, trees that will be less likely to uproot the sidewalk and cause tripping hazards. Um, we are looking at the size of the plant and the growth rate. We've recognized we've taken down some large trees around here. And so part of our recommendation is including the fast growing trees that will re-establish that tree canopy along that corridor. Drop tolerance, low maintenance, sustainability, and in respectful of the environment. And it fits with the community feel. And that again is where we're looking for your help and your input. So we, we got a nice um, surprise <laughs> and a call from the Rockridge Business District representative that they would like to help us in replanting and laying out the section between forest and college. Recognizing they've got a lot of businesses across the way and recognizing BART's going to have some limited funding with respect to what we're going to be able to replant. So, We've just initiated conversations with those folks and we'll continue to work with them after we get input from the community of how this section will go. We want to make sure that we've got some consistency going all along this frontage so one area doesn't look like one thing and the other area looks like another. So there's, there's some common, commonality going through. Uh, the options we're looking at right now and these are just options, folks. We're just presenting some ideas out here. Nothing is set in stone yet, and that's why we're here. But we do have some folks on board who've got experience with landscape and tree layout and have some recommendations and have some ideas for the community to take into consideration. And the first alternative was looking at something of a mixed color planting. And you'll see we've got some boards up, which I'll encourage you to take a look at. We're also posting these up on our website, so if you have neighbors or what have you who aren't here tonight and want to look at these things and provide us input, the input doesn't stop tonight. We'll have it open for receiving community input for the next few weeks. So please, this presentation as well as the boards we have up tonight will be available for you to look at after this meeting. Um, but what we're looking at with an idea for a mixed color planting is the larger circles being our higher canopy trees and the smaller circles being the lower canopy tree. This idea uh, could fit well across from the homes on Keith. Less likely that this plan will be beneficial on the other side between forest and college just because we have sidewalk along college in, in that, uh, along chapter in that segment and those lower canopy trees could be a hindrance to people that are walking through. In this section here, between college and going eastward, there's no sidewalk in this area. So we have a little bit more flexibility to introduce some lower canopy if that's something that interests the community. Another idea that we were looking at is just going with a more of a consistent row of just large high canopy trees. So you know, these are a couple of ideas that we're bringing forward just to kind of get an idea. Hmm, that sounds like something that is interesting to me. I like the variation, or no, I'd like more consistency. And we'd like to hear what you have to say about that. When we're looking at the mixed color planting, this is a concept of giving an idea of where we um, are looking at trees that have a canopy height of somewhere between 30 and 50 feet of their mature growth. And they spread about 20 to 30 feet, so they have they have a nice feel to them, and they uh, would work with the largeness <laughs> size of our station. Recognizing our station's not small, <laughs> um, the longevity of these trees is pretty long, so it, they will hopefully.
hopefully be around for till the next generation of folks comes around. Um, we're looking at growth rates on those to be somewhere between one to two feet per year. And um, our initial concept is, is a 24 inch box. We'll be working with the business community to see if there's a possibility to increase that. We, we haven't gotten far enough in the process to figure that out yet. The initial size of a 24 inch box would be like a 9 to 10 feet to start with, just to give an idea. And this is one of the, the trees that we would be looking at in that mixed color tree. So that would be an idea of the taller tree. Then to fill in with that lower canopy I was talking about in that segment, we'd be looking at this, this other type of tree, a great myrtle, which gets to a full grown height of 20 to 25 feet, has a spread of closer to 15 to 25, also has a long length, longevity of life, has a high growth rate of 1 to 2 feet a year, and at its start it would be like 6 to 7 feet to get going. So that, those are, that's a concept for that mixed planting. And again, up on our board, you can take a little bit of closer look. We've got some images <coughs> on those boards of what those trees kind of look like. Going with this LA concept, we're looking more of a hybrid elm that has a height of 30 to 40 feet with a spread of 20 to 30. It's also got a long life. And it's got a growth rate of, it's a fast growth weight of up to three feet a year. Um, for a 24 inch box, its initial start rate is about 11 to 12 feet. So, these are just, again, ideas that we'd like to get, hmm, that sounds like something interesting to me, or this sounds like something interesting, and get your feedback. <coughs> so where are we with our next step? We have some comment cards that Richard mentioned, so we'd like for you to give us your comments tonight, or take them home, think about it, and send them on in. Again, the information will be on our webpage, and um, Richard's email address is, is here, and phone number, and we'd really like to get comments by the beginning of February. We put February 1st, but we'll, we're, we're flexible with that. So, our goal is to try and uh, have our plan put together and be able to replant once winter is over, spring is starting, and it's appropriate time to replant. Between now and then, we'll be removing ivy and trying to get it cleared, getting the stumps cleared, and getting the ground prepared for the replanting. So we've got a little work to do between now and then. And assuming we can get a plan together and get good comment from all, our goal would be to try and get these planted probably around April or so, when the weather is appropriate and our arborist recommends the, the planting time. So that's up. A little, little inkling, and I'm happy to take questions and give you whatever knowledge I possibly can. <laughs>